Hello Engadget Expand. My name is Anna Kazunas France and I'm the digital fabrication editor of Make Magazine. It is my great pleasure to announce to you that we are unveiling today our 2014 Ultimate Guide to 3D Printing. Last year, we hosted an unprecedented event at Make Offices where we tested 15 different 3D printers. Um, and this year, we're up to 23 different printers. So as this fan is, field is rapidly expanding and growing, we're looking at all of these different printers and trying to help you figure out, as a consumer, which 3D printer is right for you. So, we saw a lot of different trends this year in 3D printing. Um, from the small and affordable, we had several printers that were under $1,000 this year. We had the PrinterBot Simple, the PrinterBot Plus, the Mini Castle, the Bikito, the Up Mini, and the Solid Doodle 3. Um, and it's a really game changer in having printers that are below this $1,000 price point. Um, before that, printers were usually in the $2,000 price range, and it was a bit of a justification to afford just getting into 3D printing and starting to tinker and play around with it. Um, so we continue to ask the question, you know, which 3D printer is right for you in this wide and changing field? Um, we also saw, in addition to these small and affordable printers that came out, that we had some precise prints with liquid resin. So there were two printers that we tested, the B9 Creator and the Form 1 from Form Labs, that were stereolithography printers. So this was the first time that we were able to, instead of just using plastic filament to print, um, we're using liquid resin for very precise prints with a lot of fine detail. Um, some things that we also saw that were new were three-armed robots or the Delta Bots that came out. We only tested one in our testing for this year. However, um, in our Once to Watch section, we highlight many others that are coming on the market. Um, we also saw some automatic adjustments. So one of the most difficult things about getting 3D printers to work well, at least in the consumer market, is having a very level bed. And that can be a challenge for the first time user. And we saw two printers in particular, the Mini Castle and the Up Plus 2, that had automatic leveling and adjustment procedures that made this much easier for beginners to use. Um, and we also saw the, the prosumer or professional consumer category grow and expand. So um, in addition to some of these cheaper, smaller, and affordable printers, we have printers that are more suitable for architects and designers and engineers to have on their desktop at work. Not necessarily the tens or hundreds of thousands of dollars that these printers used to cost, but um, much more in the, the $2,000 range. So our testing team for this year, um, we recruited 15 different testers from all across the country from a wide variety of backgrounds. We had artists, we had designers, we had 3D printing enthusiasts, leaders of build groups, teachers, um, makerspace designers, um, and managers. So people from all different walks of life. We also had a few people that were new to 3D printing, um, and they gave us some very valuable perspectives on how to test and why to test, and who we were testing for. So this brings us again to who we tested for. So it's really about what printer is right for you. And that is tailored by a whole bunch of different features and functions. So what budget do you have? Um, what type of prints do you want to uh, create? Do you want to print large objects? Are you very concerned with surface finish? Um, so there's a lot of different factors that go into what printer's right for you. And we really wanted to look at the whole variety of users throughout the maker community. So that can be, we looked at mainly three core groups that would be makers, tinkerers, and designers. So we look at makers as a group that is really interested in having their tools just perform, and they're more interested in simply creating the physical objects. Um, tinkerers are people that don't mind messing around with the machine. They're happy to upgrade it themselves. They're happy to manually muck around with it a bit to get it to work. And then we have designers, so people that are much more comfortable in software and designing objects themselves than actually perhaps creating them. Um, these may be you know, architects or 3D designers, whole variety of fields that are often designing things on their computer and then sending these things out to be produced. However, now that 3D printers are becoming easier to use and are providing much better print quality, um, we have this whole level of designers and professional consumers. There's also great interest in 3D printing and education. So schools are starting to adopt 3D printers. So we have a lot of students using them. We have a lot of educators using them. 
and they're being used in a lot of maker spaces. Um, so with a whole classroom group of people. And so as they become easier to use, it becomes easier to teach people in groups how to use them um, in a whole variety of areas. And then again, the, the prosumer professional categories, where we have people that instead of waiting months or even years to send prototypes out to be finished, to come back and then to be able to see if this model's right, if it feels right, if it looks right, if it's the right scale and size, they can just print it out on their desk. And what used to take months or even years or weeks can now take a few hours, depending on the, the printer that you have. So we really looked at this whole variety of different types of users, and we wanted to evaluate printers based on what would be right for a specific type of user. Not every printer is right for everyone. Um, and so based on budget and other factors, that can really influence what printer you should buy. So how we tested, how did we go about developing a protocol for testing these printers? So we really wanted to look at um, kind of from the very beginning, from taking it out of the box. And last year we called these our Christmas morning tests. Um, so this year, Christmas came early in that we tested for a full week before we actually implemented our shootout weekend, where we had our 15 testers come to the make offices and run our tests. Um, and what we did during these Christmas morning tests is we took each machine out of the box as they came in. We went through all of the manufacturer's instructions on how to set up and calibrate and do our first test prints. And just like you would on Christmas morning, you know, we went through and we did our test prints just to make sure that before the shootout weekend, if there were any mechanical difficulties or we needed to contact customer support, we had time to do that ahead of time. Um, we, many of our testers had extensive 3D printing testing experience. Um, many have multiple printers at home or they teach in schools or they use it in their artwork or design work. Um, but we really wanted to look at a beginner's perspective. So even though these people had extensive experience, we asked them to approach it like a beginner, to carefully read through all the documentation provided, to evaluate that documentation, to make sure that it's clear, to make sure that someone coming in as a beginner could set up this printer and understand it. And if there were difficulties in that, we wanted to note that. And we wanted to make sure that we were carefully evaluating the documentation um, and all of the setup tips from the very beginning. Um, we carefully collaborated throughout the process, so this wasn't an isolated experience. Each of the testers collaborated in teams. We each went through the testing protocol. Um, we set up the printers. We ran a whole variety of test prints. And the test prints we ran, you can see above me here. So we had a secret heart box by the designer Emmett. We had a sculptural print to kind of test surface finish, the zombie hunter head by Binglish. We had the um, Goldberg polyhedron, which we did for the resin prints. I um, mean, that's up in the corner, that, that box with all the little dots out of it. Um, and our torture test this year to really test how well printers were calibrated and dialed in from the very beginning was the spiral light bulb sculpture. Um, it's a very difficult print, and any printer that could pull this off in a reasonable way was a real standout for us. Um, we also carefully you know, pinged customer support throughout the process. If we were having an issue or we wanted to make sure that we could get more out of the machine, we would call them up. And we also wanted to test, you know, is customer support responsive? Are they responding to users' queries quickly? You know, many people are doing these as a weekend project. They're printing over the weekend. You know, does customer support respond? Do they get back to you in a timely manner? Or will it be weeks before you hear from them? Um, so these were all part of how we evaluated the different machines for our testing. So the other print that we tested that wasn't shown on the previous slide was the Make Robot. So this printer can tell you a lot about how your printer and your software settings are dialed in. So with consumer 3D printers, there are two major sides of it. One, you have the mechanical design of how the printer is put together. And then you have the firmware, the software that the printer runs, which is upgradable and you have the slicing software. In some of these printers, you have a choice of slicing software, and you can tweak the settings and dial it in to your satisfaction and get dramatically better prints from dialing it in. From some of the other printers, they're closed source, and you're not able to get into the settings as much or at all. So some of the printers we could tweak and dial in, some you can, and you're pretty much set with what you get out of the box. Um, and this robot test print really showed us a lot about, one, 
how the, um, the machine was set up. So you can have you know, these concave and convex surfaces on the top of the head and in the eyes. And you can really see, you know, are the belts tightened well in this printer? Has it been put well together mechanically? Um, you know, how well does the extruder handle very short extrusions? You know, most of the printers we tested, the fused filament fabrication printers, are essentially robotic hot glue guns. You know, they're taking in plastic filament, they're heating it up, and they're squeezing it out and drawing with the filament. Um, so if they're extruding for very short periods, some printers handle that well, some printers don't. Um, so the tiny areas on the hands and the arms are these little circles that it's continually extruding. It can tell you a lot about your printer. Um, this M on the chest, and then there's a little make logo on the back as well of this model. Um, sometimes when the printer is moving around very rapidly, you can get vibration in the nozzle. And it can kind of lead to this echoing or ghosting or repetition of features throughout. Um, and that can also tell you, you know, you're having mechanical issues or that your slicing software just isn't calibrated all that well or that your firmware is having issues with acceleration. It's not speeding up or slowing down in a smooth way. Um, you know, we have bridging, so we have kind of where the legs come together in the robot and under the arms can tell you a lot about your slicing software and how well that's calibrated. Um, and then we have some smooth surfaces on the front. If your surfaces aren't smooth vertically, you can have mechanical problems. So you could have a lead screw that perhaps mechanically isn't um, off-brand or not calibrated well. Um, or, you know, you could have alignment issues. So this print told us a lot. And it was the print that we used for our Christmas morning tests. And it was also the print that we came back to throughout the testing. So without further ado, I'd like to announce our standouts from our testing. Um, there's seven kind of machines and categories that really impressed us. Um, so we tested 23 total. And these are seven that we were thrilled with. So best value um, at you know, $399 assembled. The printer bot simple, we feel, is a great value. Um, we have a lot of educational users. More schools, more maker spaces are teaching classes where they need many people to print at once. And ideally, you know, if you're spending over $2,000 or $3,000 on a printer, you're really limited to how many you can have and how many students can be printing at once. Um, you know, this is a really great printer in that it's cheap. You know, for the budget of, you know, instead of buying just one printer, you could buy several of these and you could have them running all the time. Um, it produced acceptable prints, and you know, for, for that price, we found it was a really excellent value. Next up, we have the best-in-class prosumer fused filament fabrication. So for us, this was the Replicator 2. Um, it had exceptional prints right out of the box. You could print untethered, which means that you don't need to connect to a computer to print. You can print right from an SD card, and it's got a little control panel that you can use to do that. Um, so it's kind of nice that you don't have to have your computer attached. You can just swap your SD card in and out. This was the same printer that was in our test last year, and it was a standout, but it's had several key upgrades since then. Um, there's an extruder fix that's now standard. Um, it's upgraded firmware, so it now prints much faster, but still has very high quality prints. I mean, it's got a very large build area, so we find that it's really suitable for engineers and architects and designers, people that need high quality prints, don't necessarily want to be tied to the machine. We want a machine that performs well and looks good on the desk. Next up in our just hit print class, for people that don't necessarily really want to tinker with all of the internal settings, but still want high quality prints, that don't necessarily need a huge build area, um, we have the UP plus two. Now, what's really great about this printer is the auto leveling and auto calibration features that it has. Um, this is something that, as I mentioned before, are really key to getting beginners printing quickly and printing well. Um, a lot of printers have thumb screws under the bed that you have to level manually, kind of using a combination of moving the extruder around and testing with paper. That works well, but you know, if your printer, if your bed gets a little level off unleveled, then um, your prints cannot stick. And that can be a source of frustration to beginners. So we found that this printer, with its auto leveling, was excellent. Um, it had great print quality, but it is closed source. The software is closed. And while you can make adjustments to it, it doesn't necessarily offer all the flexibility to a tinkerer that some of the other printers do. Next up, um, our surprise hit was the Felix 2.0. This printer really surprised us. Um, 
Last year, it performed okay in our testing. This year, they made some upgrades that made it perform very well. It printed, the surface finish was beautiful right out of the box. And, um, you know, at a price point that's, that's slightly less than, say, the, the MakerBot Replicator 2, although not much. Um, so it was really quite impressive, the, the surface finish that we got. And we were really surprised by its quality. And we recommend it based on that. It's got a pretty large build area. and. Um, Although you have to print tethered initially, there are upgrades available to print from an SD card, so you could print without a computer. Next up, we have the best-in-class resin printer. Um, so this year, we were very excited to have these stereolithography resin printers in our testing. Um, we had the Form 1 and the B9 Creator. The Form 1 was a fantastic printer. Um, we call it a modern marvel in the special issue. It printed well immediately. Um, basically, all the tweaking is in software. There really is no bed leveling. There's no calibration. None of that is required. All that's really required is to orient your model properly in the software. It is quite a bit ex more expensive than the others at about $3,200. It's a good $1,000 expensive than the others. However, um, if you want very fine quality prints, you know, beautiful surface finish, and not really being able to see the striations that you can see sometimes in the fused filament fabrication printers. Um, this printer may be for you. Um, and then next we had best documentation. So one of the difficulties in getting started with 3D printing is having good documentation on your slicer settings, the software that's used to slice models into layers for 3D printing. Um, and Lulzbot really took this on. Um, they basically printed a book on you know, how to configure slicer, how to dial in their printer, how to use the settings. Um, and the manual is really recommended for anyone that wants to learn about 3D printing, whether you have a, a Lulzbot printer or a different printer. It's, uh, it's really quite excellent. And uh, we recommend this documentation highly. Um, and then we have our best open architecture printer. So the open architecture category is for printers that are open source. They open source their part files and their software. Um, and you can really get in there and tinker with it. Uh, so the Ultimaker has shown uh, a track record of really being open, having all of their parts out, um, and really letting you get in there with the software and kind of tweak and tinker, and being able to modify the printer. Um, the Ultimaker 2 is a little different than the previous version. They had a laser cut Ultimaker, which is easy to kind of expand the, the X and the Y and the Z axes and tinker with that. Um, the Ultimaker 2 has a, a much nicer appearance to it. It's a much more professional look to it. Um, might be a little bit harder to modify, but you can still get in there and tweak all the software settings. So because Ultimaker has shown this continual track record of, one, constantly improving their software, constantly improving their firmware, um, and having really beautiful custom software, even though it's open source. Cura is really intuitive. It's easy to use. And um, you know we expect great things from Ultimaker, and we've seen a lot in the future. So. Um, that is our, our standouts. We are very pleased to um, announce that this special issue is now on sale. Um, we'll have copies of it over at our booth um, to be put out shortly. And we're very excited about it. So anyone that wants to learn what printer's right for them based on their budget, based on their needs, based on their build size and finish quality, all these factors should really pick up this issue. Um, we'll be able to go through all the different 23 different reviews and figure out which printer is right for them. And we look forward to doing a lot more reviews online in the future. And we'll be continuing our coverage of 3D scanners and other 3D printers shortly. Thank you.